Hey, hey, hey. Let's go to Kabul. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Ready? Three, two, one, three. And the sun's going down now. There's City Hall. It's all sorts. Oh, that's it's cool. flower vending machine. That is so cool. Yeah. Time to find some local delicacies. design it looks like a floating tank doesn't it? yeah this is king uh, sejong uh, the great he's the third king of the joseph dynasty specifically famous for being the one who created the hangul alphabet which on the side of it has all of the characters of the hangul alphabet broken up for vowel sounds consonant sounds and they're joined together to make the general sounds it's really interesting actually after learning japanese and uh hearing about it together, hangul makes so much more sense and that would be way more easy to learn First king of the Joseon dynasty. A little bit of uh, Korean history, just to kind of, I guess, put things all into context. There were multiple different periods of Korean history, which I've highlighted as kind of the places that we're going to go see. So the Three Kingdoms, the Sila dynasty, which came out of the Three Kingdoms. They were the kingdom that decided to join in with China and take over the rest of the kingdoms. Uh, after the uh, Sila kingdom uh, was the Gyo. Yoro in Korea uh, and then there was the Johnson which was uh, the Johnson dynasty was the first dynasty that came to Seoul and uh, they built this enormous palace. Gyeongbukgun Palace was the largest of the five grand palaces of Seoul surrounded by huge walls with four main gates the four cardinal points um, this one being the biggest one. All the palaces in the capital were burnt down during the Japanese invasion in 1592. Gyeongbukgun a secondary palace was rebuilt in 1610 and served as the main palace while Gyeongbokgun uh, Palace was left derelict for over 270 years. It was finally reconstructed in order to restore the greatness of the dynasty in 1867. Gyeongbokgun Palace was largely torn down during the Japanese occupation. Almost all of its restored buildings were dismantled and an effort to re fully restore Gyeongbokgun to its full glory has been ongoing since then. I'll let you decide, audience. Is Christine excited because it's a beautiful palace or because we're the first ones in the, in the door? Oh. Yeah, 
That's a little gate. A drum shop when you got stuff like this. <laughs> Didn't do anything. <laughs> of what would be needed in a royal procession and here's an illustration that's showing the formation as well as all of the components and the people. It's crazy. Very, very fancy. It's very organised. Mm. three different vessels and through these dragon vessels I guess to count time or at least like to track time. The National Folk Museum of Korea is a cultural space which conducts the research, exhibition, education and preservation of everyday life of Korean people. The museum has three permanent exhibition galleries to present traditional culture and folklore of Korea. What a good looking family. See the evolution of the tours where you just bash it 
and then get slightly more advanced. You get machines to do it for you. Yeah, even better. Yeah. What is this? Right, so this is a turtle dance, which is a folk dance that's normally done on uh, and harvest festival days. Nice. Um, the turtle will go to different people's houses um, and wish them luck. The turtle is considered auspicious in Korea as it lives the longest among seaborne creatures and is revered as a water god. <laughs> we found it. Yeah. This is the underground super watch food vendor. Yeah. We've been to the uh, overground, we've been to the lotti, we've been just normal shops, and now there's the underground which just keeps going. So much shopping in the underground. There's so much stuff. Ready. wonder back to our hotel. I actually feel like energized now that I had some good yeah. food in me. Oh we're gonna get breakfast. Breakfast. Breakfast! <laughs> breakfast. <laughs>